I would say the the number one reason why we've had any success whatsoever is just been pure consistency. Hello and welcome to the Business of Architecture. I'm your host, Ryan Willard, and in today's episode, I will share an interview where I appeared as a guest on John Tiraman's podcast, Podcasting in Professional Services. So John Tiraman, who is a seasoned expert with over a decade's experience in marketing agencies, has been instrumental in guiding numerous firms through the intricacies of understanding their clientele, refining their brand identities, and crafting potent digital marketing strategies. His contributions to research on buyer behavior in professional services are extensive, and he's also been the host of countless podcast episodes. In this episode, John and I will discuss how the Business of Architecture podcast began. We look at how to get guests onto your podcast and how to promote a podcast, and I'll be talking uh, about how Enoch and myself um, did that in the early days days and how that process has changed as the podcast has been going on. And we also look at why a podcast is a valuable tool for any business. And in actual fact, I I think that podcasts are up there uh, with as an essential marketing tool as a website and in the very near future are going to be the tool that will replace websites and are an absolute brilliant investment for any organization to to, to set up. So sit back, relax, and enjoy myself and John Tiraman having a good old chat about podcasts. This podcast is produced by Business of Architecture, a leading business consultancy for architects and design professionals. This episode is sponsored by Smart Practice, Business of Architecture's flagship program to help you structure your firm for freedom, fulfillment, and financial profit. If you want access for our free training on how to do this, please visit smartpracticemethod.com. Or if you want to speak directly to one of our advisors about how he might be able to help you, please follow the link in the information. Hello, listeners. We hope you're enjoying our show. We love bringing you these insightful conversations, but we couldn't do it without the support of our amazing sponsors. If you're a business owner or know someone who would be an excellent fit for our audience, we'd love to hear from you. Partnering with us means your brand will reach over 40,000 engaged listeners each month. Interested in becoming a sponsor? Please send us an email at support at businessofarchitecture.com. On today's show, we've got a great interview lined up. Today's guest, Ryan Willard co-hosts the Business of Architecture podcast with Enix Sears, which has published more than 500 episodes over the last decade. On the Business of Architecture, you'll discover strategies, tips, and secrets for running a fun, flexible, and profitable architecture practice. And one thing I've noticed around these successful podcasters that I've been interviewing recently is this innate sense of curiosity. And one thing that stood out to me about Ryan's journey when he started was he decided to have more discussions with successful architects and practice owners about how they ran their firm. This was before he decided to launch a podcast. He wanted he just wanted to go out and interview these folks. Um, and then he teamed up with Enoch to publish those interviews through Enoch's Business of Architecture podcast. So it's a really interesting story of how these two guys got together um, and built the business of architecture together. So um, in this episode, you're going to hear why Ryan got started with podcasting, how it's impacted the architecture community as a whole over the past decade, how Ryan and Enoch teamed up to grow the business of architecture, the impact of the pandemic and how the podcast created in-person event opportunities. That one I think is really interesting. And then Ryan goes behind the scenes to give us a look about a typical production workflow for the podcast. So um, he's got some interesting perspective there. But before we get to Ryan, this episode was produced by Red Cedar Marketing. We help professional services firms achieve podcast-led growth. Whether your firm has an existing podcast and you want to distribute your content more effectively or you're thinking about launching a show, please reach out. We've got a number of resources, and also we offer podcast production, strategy, and marketing services. Visit redcedarmarketing.com to learn more or connect with me on LinkedIn. All right, here's my interview with Ryan. Today, I'm joined by Ryan Willard, an architect turned architecture business consultant and host of the Business of Architecture podcast. When Ryan isn't interviewing architects, investors, and industry disruptors, 
He helps successful practice owners build a business that gives them fulfillment, freedom, and exceptional finances. Ryan, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, John. Absolute pleasure to be here. I feel kind of like the Spider-Man meme a little bit. We've both got the br the brick backgrounds. Um, <laughs> it's a cool look. It's a cool look. We can't go wrong. What I like saying is that building a business is done brick by brick, and that's why I like having the bricks in the background. Uh, absolutely. So, Ryan, before we dig into the business of architecture, are you still running your own practice, or are you solely focused on working with other practice owners? I'm solely focused on working with other practice owners now. In the past, I, there was a period where I was still running my own architecture practice, but it came to a point where I had to make a choice. Did I want to go full in with doing the podcast and full in with doing the consultancy, or did I want to be an architect? And in my, in my heart, it was a very easy decision. And my own story of being an architect and why I'm helping other architect practices is it's part and parcel of that, my own dissatisfaction with the industry and the profession and how difficult it was to make money as an architect and the, the kind of, I, I guess, the disillusionment, if you like, of spending all that time and money in becoming a professional and then being very disappointed with the with the outcome of the of what was what was presented to me as a career um that was one of the things that led me to podcasting in the first place because i started to want to know well how are, are these other how are these other architect practices actually winning work how are they marketing themselves how are they talking about business and that was the the thing that kind of got me into interviewing, if you like. And then it, at, there was a point where it kind of, Enoch and myself, we'd grown it to the consultancy and we needed to, I needed, certainly I needed to make a decision whether I was going to continue being a practicing architect or was I going to do the consulting and the consulting one quite easily, I must admit. Did you find it challenging to balance both of those worlds together is that kind of one of the driving forces it worked for a while i think that for me as in architecture i don't love i wasn't in love with it i didn't in love i didn't love the process of designing buildings i never enjoyed designing buildings which is pretty weird for an architect to say yeah. and at university i was one of these strange students that was always trying to avoid designing a building and would do a project that wasn't related to designing a building and was much more communication based. Um, and and oh, I think the other thing for me as an architect is that the scope is quite limited in many ways. Here what I do now as a as podcasting in the media, as a consultant, I'm talking with people every single day. And after I jump off this call, I have a in the next six, seven hours are going to be just me conversing and talking with people. And I love it. That's what fills me up with fills me up with energy. The idea of sitting with CAD or drawing anything just fills me with a sense of dread, and it, and it always did that. And that was it was interesting because when I went about ten years ago or a bit longer, when I first set up my own architect practice, one of the first things I did was hire a business mentor, and I didn't quite know this at the time, but. I was really trying to figure a way out of architecture. Mm. I was trying to figure a way out, a different career. I, was, I, I knew that something wasn't quite lining up. And I wouldn't recommend anybody setting up a business in something that they don't really love in the first yeah. place. And, you know, the, the business was quite difficult to begin with. And I hired this business mentor. And I remember at the time, I just I couldn't. It was just the fees were so beyond my comprehension but I was so determined to work with this guy uh, a guy called Johan Taft who's is now based in Vietnam actually but he's a um, uh, he was based in the UK previously and I was so determined to work with him that that gave me a little mission and a goal and I ended up winning a whole load of work and got the fees together to to hire him hiring him as an advisor and one of the things that we worked on was started to identify skill sets and where your kind of core competencies were in terms of like natural ability and your kind of personality profiling 
And it became very clear that it was like, oh, right, you're of the personality that should be talking to people. How come you're, how come you're in this very you know, detail-orientated uh, profession that doesn't really have that much contact with loads of people? I mean, you can as an architect. And certainly very quickly, I kind of started to fall in love with the business side of architecture and the winning the work and the marketing and then the, the podcast kind of started to grow around that. And then again, I started to win work in my own business and I had no interest in wanting to build a team to deliver that work. Though I did, I, we were outsourcing lots of it to different countries and there was a point actually where we had a nice little workflow going where I had a team in Bolivia and we'd outsource drawings and work there and get it done. But again, this conversation around... The, the kind of business side, the, the financial mechanics, interviewing practices, and suddenly did begin to realise that there was a lot of stuff here that we were never taught in architecture school that would have made running a practice a lot more sustainable and, in, and enjoyable from the outset, if you like. And so that's where the, the podcast started to take a different direction. And I'd partnered up with Enix, so Enix in, Enix is in California. He'd founded the business of architecture uh, I probably joined him podcasting so he founded it as a podcast and then maybe a, a couple of years later I kind of started I joined him I listened to a few of his episodes I contacted him on LinkedIn and said hey I'm an architect in the UK I'm going to be interviewing all these architects about how they're running the business can I publish them on your platform and he was like yeah absolutely that's a great idea and then that relationship began to, to, to blossom and to grow. That's um, a fantastic story. And it sounds like your introduction to business and podcasting was fueled by kind of this innate sense of curiosity within yourself to try to learn <clears throat> more about the business of architecture. And that show that Enoch launched, I think it was more than 10 years ago, going all the way back to 2012, Today, that podcast has published over 500 episodes, which is just simply amazing. I was actually, in prepping for this podcast, I was listening to episode 128 in 2015, where you were actually a guest on the show before yeah. you became one of the hosts. And I want to dig into kind of your working relationship with Enoch and how, that, how that's gone over the years. But before we do that, do you think the podcast has done its job? In other words... In those early episodes, you set out to elevate the awareness and understanding of the business of architecture within the profession. Have you noticed practice owners becoming more aware or educated about the business side of architecture? Yes, absolutely. I'm very proud of what Enoch and I have accomplished with the podcast and feel that it's become a kind of industry staple. I'm amazed at the how it's found itself into the ears of all these people around the world um, and how many people contact us about it and acknowledge us and say great things. We get a lot of weird comments as well. And in the past, I've had architects tell me that I shouldn't be talking about business and I should focus more on talking about beautiful buildings. And I've had people accuse Enoch and I or myself as well of, of being responsible for um, making architects focused on profit and producing really bad buildings. And there's, there was one guy who messaged me saying how I was um, encouraging architects to work on things like Bibby Stockholm. So Bibby Stockholm in the UK is one of these floating barges where they put immigrants in who were trying to get into the country. It's not a very, it's, it's really, unple I can guarantee you there aren't any architects who are working on that project to, to start with. But it was such a ludicrous kind of accusation and, and did show, again, you know, a kind of deep misunderstanding about business and profit and architecture. But that's definitely in the minority of it. And loads of people have become so much more interested in the business side of it. We get students, which I think is so encouraging, who are always contacting us about they've got their ideas and plans and hopes and dreams of being developers or setting up their own practice. I know so many architects, certainly when they set up their own practice, they listen to hundreds of our episodes and I love it when, when they become clients and they're like, well, we've been listening to the podcast for the last six, seven years. 
and I've implemented X, Y, and Z, and we're actually, this is, this is how we've got the money to be able to afford your services now. And there's already a, a kind of really solid foundational relationship that's been put into place without us ever having to actually to be there. And it's led both Enoch and myself to be public speakers and we talk a lot on the subject, whether it be at universities to at the ROBA in the UK or the AIA in the US, these kind of talks with the professional bodies, we get interviewed on podcasts and other people's podcasts all over the place. So I, I certainly feel like we've been one of the major players over the last decade in turning the architecture industry on to business and Enoch and I we've often said one of our missions is really to make business sexy for architects and at, at, at the heart of it if you want to be doing good design and running a successful business and be fulfilled with it you've got to be you've got to be skillful in the in the business aspects of it otherwise it's just too difficult really too difficult yeah, the what is it, the the first job of architecture? The first rule of architecture is to win the job, right? Very good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And so there's no architecture that happens without clients. So that's a it's a very good message I think that you're sending out there, and I think it's a you're doing architects a service so that they can provide a service to the community. Yeah. Uh, can you kind of dive into the story of how you teamed up with Enoch? and what that working relationship was, maybe what it was like when you first started working with him and how has that relationship evolved over time? So I believe, as you said, Enoch started his podcast in 2012. It may have been a little bit earlier or he may have had some few episodes a little bit earlier than that. Around about 10 years ago, 2014, I started working with this business mentor. One of my assignments from the business mentor if you like was to go and talk to other architects about how they were running a business to benefit my own architectural practice see what they were doing I figured it was a good idea to record these conversations that I was going to have with these architects and I had listened to Enix podcast a few times I believe I had even bought one of Enix's first online marketing programs which I still have the password for somewhere and that might have been in 2013 I've told him about this it was and I, I remember and I went through the whole and that was and I enjoyed it and, and again I think that was one of my first forays into online education it was quite dense I remember the online educational package it was like there was a lot of uh, a lot of video content and it certainly not as slick and as well organized as things that we produced today but the I remember seeing the whole idea of like wow this, this is really good this, this is kind of quite comprehensive online program for education about architects but I was listening to the podcast and started doing my own interviews contacted Enoch on LinkedIn and said hey this is what I'm going to do we jumped on a Skype call I believe I remember it being sort of one in the morning for me in the UK. We had a conversation. He said, "Yeah, that sounds like a that sounds like a fantastic idea." I think we arranged a little little financial deal where he, he was giving me maybe I think it was like 50 bucks or something. It was a small amount of money, but it was it was a nice it was a nice kind of token, if you like. And he gave me some advice on what equip, what what equipment to get and told me to get my Zoom H4n, a couple of XLR mics and some Audio Technica microphones. Those are my first ones, which I still have to this day and I still use them. And the Zoom H4n, if I do a live podcast, that's, it still makes an appearance. and I still get that out and use it. But it was a pretty basic setup and, and that was it. And I kind of started doing these podcast and then I would send them to Enoch and and he'd edit them and publish them on the business of architecture the main platform and I did that for a few years and I absolutely loved the whole going into other people's architecture practices people were really open and positive and were really encouraging and were like yes somebody needs to be doing this somebody needs to be and because I was focusing very much on the UK and there was nothing like that in the UK and people were 
really like, yeah, we we need to be having this conversation because what's happening in the industry is it's really warped at the moment. The fees are really low. The profession is so poorly paid for the amount of work and energy it takes for you to become an architect. And to document this kind of the background of practices is would be really a very valuable thing to do and a, a worthwhile body of knowledge. And so Enoch and I, that was how the relationship began. And I was aware that Enoch at the time, he was, he was, he'd found about that time a, a company called the Architects Marketing Institute with Eric Bobro and Richard Petrie. And they had kind of started selling online marketing programs. It wasn't associated with the business of architecture, the podcast. Business of architecture was a kind of separate thing that Enoch was doing that wasn't really a money generator for a little bit of time anyway. But he had the AMI program and that that was kind of selling online programs and courses all focused around marketing. I believe Enoch at some point began a program called the AFF, the Architecture Firm Formula, perhaps. I can't remember the, what the name was for it. But that was an online business training program, which was all to do with architectural business systems. And so Enoch was doing that, and I was just kind of providing architectural content and casts. And at some point, Enoch and I were talking, and we were like, well, what if we, what if I, and I, my, part of my interest was to kind of, to to bring the business of architecture to the UK as a franchise almost. And so Enoch and I started talking about this idea of bringing it as a franchise. And I think at the time I had ideas of turning it into like a, a media company or having a kind of more media production and kind of leveraging the podcast. And Enoch was like, well, well yeah, why don't we, why don't we try it? Why don't we see what happens? Why don't you, why don't you launch a business of architecture podcast, which is totally focused on the UK and I think that was about 20 we had that idea in 2017 and it actually got launched on the first of or in January 2018 I believe and so that was what happened and that's when the podcasting got super serious I think at the time I probably went off and recorded 20 episodes before I before we launched it so oh, okay. I, I kind of had a big stack of them ready to go and we reused some of the ones that I'd already been using on the US platform. So we weren't short of uh, of content. But I, I remember I launched it as a, a big event in the centre of London, had a big kind of industry panel. So I invited five top flight architects who I'd been very impressed with and who had admired their careers, had them on a panel, um, hosted it. I remember kind of I struck up all sorts of interesting marketing deals with sponsors and um, people things like that and it was a great it was great we had about 200 people that showed up for the first event um, which was really kind of wow and I remember at the time there was a lot of people that came along and they were saying wow the the ROBA struggles to get 25 people into a room to talk about business so this is Clearly, the, 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 some, there was something fresh and interesting about it, uh, and perhaps it, the fact that it wasn't coming from a professional body made right. it a little bit more kind of appealing. And certainly from my side, I've always thought that the the ROBA and the AIA, they, they actually do really good events, and they've got loads of stuff available for architects, but it's not in an entrepreneurial context. It's, they're, an, they're an institution and they lack the kind of entrepreneurial spirit of what's needed to run a business. And, and I think that's one of the things that we can offer, which is quite a fresh perspective. But that was how the UK podcast started. There was ideas of it perhaps doing more of these live events. And that was certainly the trajectory for the beginning was that we would do more live events like that. And Mike and I were talking about, I was going to I had plans probably around 2020 by this point to do a whole load of live events, live training weekends and things like that. And then, of course, COVID happened, <laughs> which kind of put a stop to all of that. And by, by this point, I'd actually started doing one to one consultations with people. So just as a kind of my credibility in the industry had grown through the podcast, people were asking me for bits of advice. I felt confident enough as well to advise and give counsel to people about their businesses. And I'd also been doing a little bit of work with 
the Architects Marketing Institute as well, kind of behind the scenes. So I had sort of a little side gig there where I was doing little bits and pieces and learning all of the strategies. And funnily enough, I, though I'd never intended on being a coach, I had participated in a personal development program since 2014, which had trained me to become a coach, essentially. And so I'd, whilst I was doing all of this, I'd spent probably about seven years training to become a coach. I know that sounds strange that I never had any intentions of being a coach, if you like, but that was an, another sort of thing that I'd been doing really for my own personal development and didn't necessarily think of it being a career in and of itself. But of course, it was like the elusive obvious at some point. I was like, well, I've actually been trained to be a coach and I've been coaching people in performance outside of this as part of my own personal development. And then around probably 2018, 2019, I think I got my first solo client, very much to Enoch encouraging me to do it and take it on. And we'd spoken about how it could be structured and we had people asking me for advice. And I think we became more actively, I used to put these little messages into the podcast um, that were, they were quite open and they were, I think I used to call them, have a cup of tea with Ryan have a 15 minute chat, cup of tea, tell me about what's going on in your business and I'll see if I have anything I can do to advise or to help. And they became basically- People took you up on that, yeah? Yeah, people took it up and I was finding my calendar was being just totally booked out. And then they became sales conversations. So I'd speak with somebody for 15 minutes, I'd ask, just ask questions, what's going on? Okay, sounds like something I might be able to help you with. How about we sit down for 90 minutes and I can do a, a deeper dive into what it is that you're talking about and see if there's something that we can do together. And at the end of that 90 minutes, um, we've been in a position, I can give you an idea of what the investment might cost and what the problems are. I could probably outline a bit of what the process might look like and then we can make a decision if you want to do business together. How does that sound? And people were like, yeah, sounds great. So those calls started to mount up before I knew it. There was one client, and then once you got the first one, and so I absolutely It becomes loved, a bit addicting it. after that, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it had, it had, had the first one, and I was like, wow, this is amazing, actually. I love doing this. And the, the person I was working with was getting, was getting great results. And then before I knew it, it wasn't very long where I had a whole load of, I had a whole load of these one-to-one -one clients. And I was, that was when I started thinking, I can let go of the architecture actually this is way more enjoyable it's much more kind of in alignment with it it start all these sorts of light bulbs started going on off of my head like you know you realize you've just spent seven years training to be a coach and in leadership and this is probably why you've done all that training even though in your brain I was consciously saying this is a personal development what I love about this story Ryan is I can just see the momentum building throughout right and it's kind of started with this podcast idea and that grew into uh, more of like a peer-to-peer -peer conversation uh, forum and that was the appeal when you launched the business of architecture uk and were mm -hmm. able to to have a crowd come together in a in an in-person event and then i think from my experience and from researching podcasting and looking at the kind of the evolution of podcasting over time in 2020, according to Listen Notes, there were over a million different podcasts that were launched wow. um, kind of during that COVID period. And then from there, it just I see the confidence building on the foundation of that podcast for you to take on clients and then eventually lead you to the decision to leave architecture behind and go full into this consulting gig. It's a, this is a, it's a really great story. COVID was a very important point and it was the during then, during COVID, when I decided to kind of let go of architecture altogether, and I'm so glad I did because, to be quite honest, that I, and I was very aware as well that trying to do two things just had my brain split. There was, too, there was so much unknown intrigue and excitement with the world of business of architecture and the podcast and the freedom and the, you know, just it was an entrepreneurial kind of hunger, if you like. Um, that wasn't there in the architecture um, business. 
And it was, and things changed as well when I made that decision. Just to kind of let go of something, to say no to that chapter of my life. And it had been the best part of over 20 years, just been dedicated to just training, studying, becoming an architect. And it was very much, you know, a lot of people thought it was a bad idea. And why are you doing this podcast? Just focus on the architecture and blah, 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 blah. And it actually was the thing that opened up a whole new world of possibility. And COVID as well was one of the things that it was the the point where Enoch and I started to collaborate even closer together. He left the Architects Marketing Institute. So he was in a kind of this position of, well, I want to focus just solely on the business of architecture. And during COVID, I wasn't able to go out anywhere. So I just naturally stopped interviewing people in person and started interviewing people like we're doing right now. And that suddenly opened up this whole world of the rest of the world, basically. And I started being more involved with people in the US and interviewing US-based clients. And that's just when I started to kind of let go of being solely focused on what was happening in the UK. And obviously Enix kind of welcoming into America and here are people that you could be talking with. And then we just started to kind of work more and more closely. And eventually we came to an agreement to be business partners, essentially, and build up the business of architecture and the smart practice fo- program, building upon what he'd kind of already developed with this AFF program. And then that was where we really started to build what we've got now, which is we've now we've got about 60, 70 clients all over the world. We've got the smart practice program, which is a year long engagement for architects. And we spent quite a few, the first few years just selling and coaching and building up a client base. And it was really, it was life changing, really kind of amazing development, if you like. In talking with other podcasters, one thing that's kind of like a common theme throughout is that these podcasts grow and evolve over time right and that's not a bad thing that's actually a very good thing because if you can't evolve and adapt to changes in your business changes in the external environment then your show's not going to last and it's going to flame out and it's clear how the podcast fits into your marketing strategy what i'd like to do ryan is shift gears just a little bit and just quickly touch on you've the business of architecture has produced over 500 episodes and with so many episodes you've got to have a rock solid production workflow can you take us just a little bit behind the scenes you're smiling you i'd love to kind of like understand like how do you manage guests prep work production that kind of stuff yeah so it's been a, a an interesting one getting our workflow up and running we at right now uh, and this has been through a lot of mistakes and problems uh, we have an awesome team that helps us do all of this like just and the technology now is always brilliant like riverside what a fantastic yeah. i mean i've had pop, i've had my issues with riverside in the past yeah, but, so so, so, but now <laughs> nowadays now it's got it's the ai function and the clips that you can produce and you can edit it in here the, the, though we don't tend to do that but you can and sometimes now i've, I've started doing actually using Riverside in person with people. I don't know if you've tried this, actually taking your laptop, bringing a kind of interface with you, and then I'll record the video on Riverside, and then I'll record the sound on Audition, for example. Yeah. So that that works quite nicely. The workflow now, we have a guy called Suresh in India who is amazing, and he's been, I mean, he's been working with Enoch, I reckon, probably for the, best part of 10 years for a long time and he takes all of the videos he edits them cleans them up and then we've got Jackie on our team who's the kind of office superstar she handles all the kind of internal communications with the business of architecture consulting team and she also manages the whole process of the podcast and make sure that she makes sure that I get my intros recorded on time. She makes sure that she's the one that collects the bio and the photographs from the guests that we have on. She schedules Enoch and I. She schedules all of our podcasts. She schedules the podcasts that Enoch and I do with each other. 
So all of that is kind of managed. She also nowadays, if I want to speak to a guest, she'll be the one that reaches out to the guest to bring them onto the show. She'll often liaise of all the PRs. So the PRs, they contact her. She'll show me a list of potential guests and I get to pick them. It didn't used to be like that. It used to be, I used to be the one that was reaching out to architects and would would ring people up and would plead with them to be on the podcast and try and explain, no, I don't want to talk about buildings, I want to talk about the business side of it. And then I used to do a lot of my own editing, certainly with shorter form micro content. I would do I used to do all of that. I used to love doing all of it as well. It's not it's not the best use of your the best use of your time. But now we have the workflow is great because I can do maybe two podcasts a week. Max and Enoch can do this, a similar sort of thing and it just shows up in our calendar. We click on the link and there's a guest there. All the information about the guest is written to the side and often I've spoken with them 15 minutes beforehand or I'm already aware of their work or whatever. And then it's easy. I finish the podcast. Then Jackie will write an introduction for me. So using the bio and then I'll go and record that introduction separately like what you said you were going to do here. And then that asset, the video asset and the audio gets sent off to Suresh. He tidies it all up. These days, I think a lot of the captions and the writing, we use ChatGPT quite a lot to help us clean it up. Again, Jackie's the one who sort of directs a lot of that and she'll use ChatGPT and to come with a headline. We actually write with a headline. We, we've recently started working with a copywriter to help with some of the the headlines and stuff and we've tried all sorts of things with headlines and certainly Enoch and I got a good handle on writing good headlines for a while anyway but that's quite a big thing actually just finding the headline and then we manage it all nowadays it's all managed inside of Airtable Mm -hmm. so we just it's a kind of like is this piece done is this not done and it's great for me because I mean I, I all I do literally is do this as I just look at my calendar, click on a link, someone presses play, they ask me a question or I ask them a question and that's it and then I'm done. But in, in, the, in the past it was a lot more, we'd have a, we used to use smart sheets and then mm-hmm. you'd be able to see what piece was done, when was it ready and we have publication dates all set up of when the podcast is going to go out and all that kind of stuff. But again, it's, you know, the, the team behind it is really good and it took a little while to find it took a while to find the right people for sure and Nick and I a few years ago we because we'd been releasing a podcast pretty much every single week so we never did seasons yeah and my advice to people is do seasons (laughs) (laughs) because because you could just like block up a whole load of them and take a bit of a break but we just went and we just pretty much for the last 10 years or so it's been almost a podcast every single week and so that that's that takes a lot actually it does but i think that unrelenting consistency is one of the biggest factors to the podcast's it, success a- absolutely absolutely i would say the number one reason why we've had any success whatsoever is just been pure consistency with it with this one thing the podcast has been the central consistent factor and we've just done it again and again and there's yeah I mean between us I think we've probably done in the realm of maybe 800 interviews I reckon something like that it's it's quite a lot and then there's lots of other videos as well that are there that we've produced and um, we've started doing more kind of little mini documentaries now that we're starting to put together I, I tell you what's interesting though for the vast majority of the life of the business of architecture podcast Enoch and I always interviewed guests and it's only been in the last 18 months that Enoch and I have started to interview each other that's the trend these days it, we're, I think I'm seeing more and more podcasts kind of shift in that direction it will it, well, it, it's, it works for a number of reasons one is that now we have complete control over what is said i honestly believe as well that we have we're in a position where our careers have evolved where we've become in a healthy way 
unplugged from the architecture industry. So we're no longer practicing architects. And I think that's a really important position to be because we're not like in the weeds of it every single yeah. day, but we're still working with it. And we've had that experience of being architects and being unplugged gives us this unique perspective on the industry where we can step back from it and we can see how it's working and we can be very critical of it as well. And I think we're entitled to be able to be critical of it because well, we're architects and we've gone through all of that kind of slog and trauma of the industry. So I'm quite happy to be in a position where we can call things out. And also we've worked with over 200 clients in a very intimate capacity. And we've seen businesses, we've helped turn around businesses that weren't making profit. We've worked with some of the most successful practices, small architecture businesses in the US. And we've gotten a real good level of insight. So now when Enoch and I interview each other or we talk about a topic, I feel like we can produce really good, valuable stuff. We can be more provocative. We can go deeper on a topic. We're not, we don't feel like we have to be filtered by anybody. We don't care what the AIA thinks or the REBA thinks. We can say whatever it is. We're not running the risk of upsetting some of our um our developer clients or anything like that so we can be a little bit more open and transparent about it and also we can talk very uh, precisely and clearly about how businesses have turned around or solved some of these problems where I think when we interview guests many times their expertise is unconscious so they don't actually know what it is that they're doing for mm -hmm. why they're successful or why something's happened in their business, or sometimes they're not as successful as they're making out. And so that's so that kind of happens as well. So I feel like now Enoch and I, we can have a much more frank, open discussion uh, about something. We can be much more kind of personalized with our opinions, and it's more valuable for the clients and, and for listeners and the audience. And what we've actually found, that since we've been doing that, our engagement has shot up, with comments, we get people who now, we used to have quite a long protracted sales funnel off, off the podcast, or we'd invite people into webinar trainings first, or we'd have, I was saying, I used to do the cup of tea with Ryan type of thing. And now we just have people just coming straight to us. They were, they were saying, just heard your podcast on such and such and thing. How do I join your program that you were talking about? And so it's a very kind of direct, Cool. And I would recommend that with anybody who's doing, who is, who's doing a podcast is to make sure that you give yourself the opportunity to demonstrate your expertise and show people what you, what you can do. So don't forget to interview yourself or to have you on the show. And, it, and it's, it's one of the reasons why I'm enjoying being the guest on other people's podcasts like this, because it's a, a, a kind of new, a newish thing. And you're like, yeah, I want to be on the other side for the microphone for a bit, actually, see what it's like. That's exactly what I've found is podcasters are typically the ones asking the questions. They're not necessarily the ones talking, you know, being the in the spotlight per se. Um, but uh, you, you, I think you've, you've got to tread a, a line here as well where you don't want to fall into the trap of being perceived as a journalist or yes. being perceived as the media. And at one point, I did want to be more like a media person, if you like. And then it became, actually, we've got a service to sell now. So if you're using a podcast as a professional services organization, you want to be able to do it so that you're still demonstrating your expertise in something and not become a journalist. And you don't want the industry to treat you like a journalist. Not that being a journalist is anything wrong with it. It's just that you're a consultant. You've got something to you've got something to sell. So you still want to make sure that we're showcasing the expertise. It doesn't need to be look at me. I'm fantastic and blah 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 blah. You can the po the podcast is still quite a subtle way of demonstrating expertise, and you can demonstrate expertise through asking good questions for sure, absolutely. But it also you know give yourself that opportunity where you can be the one who's advising on the on a podcast. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for sharing your story of the business of architecture, your journey through being an architect, through launching the podcast, breaking up, breaking it off into the business of architecture UK, 
bringing it back together with Enoch and the business of architecture. And just, it's really cool to see how that's been the foundation of your growth and in your career. For folks that are listening to this, obviously subscribe to the business of architecture. But if folks that are listening want to connect with you, where can they find you? You can find me at Ryan at the business of architecture dot com or you can email me linkedin is probably a good place linkedin or instagram i encourage people to go and follow me on there i'm always posting lots of content and you can engage with me ask questions and happy to meet and talk people excellent well ryan thank you for your time my pleasure thank you john and that's a wrap hey enix sears here and i i have a request since you are a listener here of the business of architecture podcast ryan and i we love putting this podcast together we love sharing information as much as we can glean from all the other industries that we're a part of to bring it back to empower you as an architect and a designer. And one thing that helps us in our mission is the growth of this podcast, simply because it helps other architects stand for more of their value, spreads the business information that we're sharing to empower architects together. So architects, designers, engineers can really step into their greatness, whatever that looks like for each individual. And so here, my, my simple ask is for you to join us and be part of our community by doing the following, heading over to iTunes and leaving a review of the podcast. And as an expression of our sincere thanks, we would like to give you a free CEU course that can get you one professional development unit, but more importantly, will give you a very solid and firm foundation on your journey to becoming a profitable and thriving architect. So here's the process for that. After you leave us a review, send an email to support at businessofarchitecture.com. Let us know the username that you use to leave the review, and we will send you that free training. On the training, you'll discover what 99% of architecture firm owners wished they would have known 20 years ago. And the other 1%, well, they just didn't even know that they didn't know. Head over to iTunes and leave us a review now. This episode is sponsored by Smart Practice, Business of Architecture's flagship program to help you structure your firm for freedom, fulfillment, and financial profit. If you want access for our free training on how to do this, please visit smartpracticemethod.com. Or if you want to speak directly to one of our advisors about how he might be able to help you, please follow the link in the information. Hello, listeners. We hope you're enjoying our show. We love bringing you these insightful conversations, but we couldn't do it without the support of our amazing sponsors. If you're a business owner or know someone who would be an excellent fit for our audience, we'd love to hear from you. Partnering with us means your brand will reach over 40,000 engaged listeners each month. Interested in becoming a sponsor? Please send us an email at support at businessofarchitecture.com. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond or commitment except to help you be unstoppable.